All right, hi there. These comments are for M. You're one of my online TOEFL students in the online TOEFL course, the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. I have the reading and the listening passage on one side here. I have your response on the other. You completed my integrated writing practice test number one, right? So uh, I think it's pretty accurate. I'm going to put you at 2.75 out of 5, 18 points out of 30 on this practice test. If you were one of my students, I would put you at 73% on this particular uh, writing project, right? So I looked at the rubrics here, and I think here... A lot of language errors in there. So your response contains language errors or expressions that make connections or meanings unclear at key junctures, right? So I think that's part of it. So quite a few language use issues. All right, so let's go back to what you wrote and let's compare here. Now the first major change I would make, and by the way, you have a lot of good ideas here. How many words did you get here? I'm impressed, 291, right? Now you say in the introduction, the reading and the writing passages discussed some controversial issues in the business strategies to success, which is true, but you're not quite showing what the relationship is between the reading and the listening passage. For example, the listening passage specifically disagrees with points mentioned in the reading, but you're not saying that so we don't exactly know what the relationship of ideas are based on what you have written. Okay, but what if you said this? The reading passage discusses three strategies that businesses should follow in order to be successful. And in the listening passage, the speaker disagrees with each of the tips mentioned. Now that exactly shows what the relationship is, right? What if we, let's make our writing a little more concise here. There, that's even better. So the reading passage discusses three successful business strategies. And in the listening passage, the speaker disagrees with each of the tips mentioned. So now we exactly know what the relationship is between the listening and the reading passage. All right, let's take a look at your next paragraph. It says, uh, the reading passage illustrated that increasing the number of meetings is effective for discussing the argumenta issues as well as they're important. But does the reading say increasing the number of meetings? It says, all employees need to attend all company meetings and companies should schedule as many meetings as possible. So I'm not sure it's saying to increase meetings, but to schedule meetings and attend meetings. And I would use uh, present here so it illustrates the EM I'm going to slightly change what you're saying here. The reading passage illustrates employees should go to all meetings and that meetings are effective for discussing You can say this. 
They are effective for discussing argumentative issues. And you might want to say this instead of what you said, let's, let's get a little bit less wordy here. And to ensure Maybe do this. That employees should go to all meetings that mean are effective for discussing argumentative issues. probably say this and I think we got it so we had to make some changes here so first of all the reading passage illustrates that employees should go to all meetings that meetings are effective for discussing argumentative issues and that meetings update employees with the necessary new technologies in order to do They're required. I'm going to change that. And conversely, in the listening passage, the speaker argues. And let's take a look here. Let's go back to the listening passage here. It's saying limit the number of meetings. Internal meetings can be a huge waste of time, especially those longer than 60 to 90 minutes, right? And you say, uh, and restrain them for the controversial issues is an efficient use of time. This is where you're having some vocabulary and some uh, grammatical issues here. So your meaning is not quite clear. Let's see what it's saying here. It says, avoid meetings that are going to be unproductive. Don't go to meetings beyond 60 to 90 minutes. Meetings longer than one hour you might say We have here the argues that meetings should be limited, that meetings longer than one hour are often a waste of time. Probably have a period here. Say so something like, moreover.
And this is where I'm going to go right to what you're saying here and get rid of a lot of this stuff. So moreover, the speaker suggests that workers should avoid longer meetings or long meetings. By excusing not your, you have to say, maybe excusing themselves because we're talking about workers. You might say here, such as making phone calls or answering sending emails. Okay, so I think we cleaned it up. So uh, you know what you want to say, but you're honestly having a lot of trouble trying to put together your English to, to, in terms of saying it. All right, so let's look at this paragraph. Okay, let's take a look at the first paragraph, a uh, second paragraph one more time. So first of all, the reading passage illustrates. Notice how I'm using present tense here, not past. The reading passage illustrates that employees should go to all meetings, that meetings are effective for discussing argumentative issues, and that meetings update employees with the necessary new technologies in order to do their assigned jobs. Conversely, in the listening passage, the speaker argues that meetings should be limited and that meetings longer than one hour are often a waste of time. Moreover, the speaker suggests that workers should avoid long meetings by excusing themselves You might say here to do other important obligations they need to attend to, such as making phone calls and answering and sending emails. Okay, we're good. All right, so we have this paragraph pretty well finished. Let's go to the next one. Second of all, according to the reading passage, providing supplementary reading documents is important to increase the efficiency. But is that exactly what it says? It's saying that employees should be provided with supplementary reading materials. They're encouraged to read all documents. Right, you're not really getting that here. So providing supplementary uh, according to the reading passage, providing employees with supplementary reading documents is important to increase their efficiency.
you could probably just say that and then move from here. So let's go back. So conversely, okay, so let's take a look at what you said about the listening passage. So you say conversely in the listening passage, you need a subject here. So you have to say something like uh, the speaker. The speaker supports the idea of not reading the full text. And I'm going to say, and only not reading and focusing. So parallel structure, not reading the full text and only focusing on the useful parts of the document. And I don't think you need to say the rest of this. You're having, I don't think it's even needed here. So we're going to get rid of all this. Let's look at what it says here. Maybe you need to find only one or two examples that illustrate a particular larger point. Make, make it a point to search what's important while skipping sections that are less relevant. So I think we've said what we, we need to say here. So in the listening past, the speaker supports the idea of not reading the full text and only focusing on the on the most useful parts of the documents from Okay, I think we're good. Now we're ready to go to the, the last one here. Okay, let's take a look here. So the writer, we want to say here, we need the, the verb, not a noun. So emphasizes, the writer emphasizes that the employees must consider They must be sensitive you might say something like this so the writer emphasizes that the employees must be sensitive to their time constraints that they How about this? And let's look at what it says here exactly. So So we might say this I think that's good enough. Nevertheless, the listening, not listing, the listening passage suggests that 
the employees follow the procedures of the writing process by separating the main steps by separating the main steps by separating the main steps composing the main points we might say this in an orderly fashion Maybe, and after that, coming out with a rough draft And then finally, revising it. We can probably say that. So let's look at this paragraph one more time. So finally, the writer emphasizes that the employees must be sensitive to their time constraints and that they should write the reports all at once without adhering to the steps of the writing process that they learned in college. Nevertheless, the listening passage suggests that employees follow the procedures of the writing process by separating the main steps, composing the main points in an orderly fashion, and after that, coming up with a rough draft and finally revising it. We got it. And then we have to sum up the reading and the listening passages. Have different... have different views regarding how businesses can be successful. Okay, I think we have it. Okay, so now let's take a look at it one more time and I'll give you my final comments on your writing here. So the reading passage discusses three successful business strategies and in the listening passage, the speaker disagrees with each of the tips mentioned. First of all, the reading passage illustrates that employees should go to all meetings, that meetings are effective for discussing argumentative issues and that meetings update employees with the necessary new technologies in order to do their assigned jobs. Conversely, in the listening passage, the speaker argues that meetings should be limited and that meetings longer than one hour are often a waste of time. Moreover, the speaker suggests that workers avoid long meetings by excusing themselves to do other important obligations they need to attend to, such as making phone calls and answering and sending emails. Second of all, According to the reading passage, providing employees with supplemental, supplementary reading documents is important to increase their efficiency, and these workers should be encouraged to reach all, to read, sorry, to read all the materials that they are given. Conversely, in the listening passage, the speaker supports the idea of not reading the full text and only focusing on the most useful parts of the documents from the assigned readings. Finally, the writer emphasizes that employees must be sensitive to their time constraints and that they should write the reports all at once without adhering to the steps of the writing process that they learned in college. Nevertheless, the listening passage suggests that employees follow the procedures of the writing process by separating the main steps, composing the main points in an orderly fashion, and after that, coming out with a rough draft and finally revising it. Notice what I did here, separating, composing, coming, revising. That's called parallel structure. 
To sum up, the reading and the listening passage had different views regarding how businesses can be successful. And that's it. Now for you, what can you do, if anything, to improve your writing right now? So uh, uh, I think there are some things that you can do that will make a difference, right? So I'm gonna go over to my website. You might wanna do the same and I'll show you exactly uh, what I think is going to help you the most. Uh, unfortunately, you have vocabulary issues for sure. You need to advance your vocabulary. That was part of your problem is as you were trying to paraphrase the ideas, you weren't paraphrasing I think using the most accurate word choice. So what you can do here is focus on three lessons here to improve. And this is going to help you with the IELTS or any type of exam that you have to take in English for that matter. Uh, you want to check out lesson number four, vocabulary lesson five, vocabulary lesson six. This is section one of my course or step one. Now, grammar. You actually understand how to structure your writing, so I didn't notice any major problems with that. Uh, this next one, number seven, lesson seven, sentences with noun clauses. I think you can improve that. Uh, the biggest issue probably is uh, lesson 14, parallel structure. I think you definitely can work on that. Let me see if we have anything else here. Yeah, I'm going to say lesson 24, gerunds and infinitives. I think that's a good lesson for you to study right now. Uh, lesson 27, being more concise. I think that will be a very helpful lesson for you. All right, so those are some things you can do right now that I think will have a big impact on improving your writing. So remember that a lot of your problem here is you understand what's in the reading, you understand what's in the lecture, but when you're trying to paraphrase the ideas, that's when you start having your language use issues, your vocabulary and your grammar issues, which is why I gave the suggestions that I did. All right? So thank you for completing the practice.